Okay, I think we are all set and the link is good to go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to BPBC's sixth concert and second artist in residence series. Um, I'm Sam, I'm a administrative member of BPBC and I'm so excited to greet you all today. Um, we have such an exciting uh, concert for you tonight and I'm gonna hand it over to, uh, to Darian Thomas, our artist in presence in just a minute. Um, I wanted to um, just talk very briefly about our artist in residence process. Basically what happens is um, we select a past collaborator and to be our, our artist in residence, in this case, Darian. And basically Darian creates a signature concert. So he decides who to commission, he decides who gets to play the piece. And this is kind of our way of going outside um, the umbrella of our, our networks and kind of like expanding our BPBC family. So we're really, really excited um, to be uh, hosting Darian and um, the composer of, ch of choice, um, Amira Leon. So it's so uh, fantastic to have you here today as well as Aaron Liao. Um, and with that, I also want to talk about our June month fundraiser, which is really, really exciting. And it's um, starting today. So I believe we should be posting some links in the chat. We are starting a fundraising drive this whole month. And so there's all these really fantastic events. So please um, remember to check out our Instagram handle, uh, check us out on Facebook, and also um, check us out on our website, which is just bassplayersforblackcomposers.com. Um, we have um, a lot of really, really awesome things. So if you really like what you hear and see tonight, please consider making a tax deductible donation so we can keep doing these, uh, what we do. Um, and without further ado, I want to hand it over to our fantastic artist in residence, Darian Thomas. Thanks so much for being with us, Darian. Hello, yes, of course. Uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> uh, yeah, this has been really amazing. I. I don't know. I loved working with y'all before and like having you premiere my piece and you did such a good job with it and committed so much. And now a lot of people are performing it as well because you do this wonderful thing where whenever a composer works with you, they get to like have their piece on your website in the database and on a shop so people can buy it and perform it. And I got this cool message from someone recently that they're performing it at like Oxford, I think. And they were like, yeah, my teachers don't really like that I'm doing it, so I'm going to do it. And I was like, whoa, that's really cool. So this is a, I don't know, it's just such a beautiful thing. And it's a, it seems to be doing real world, like, material good <laughs> for people, which uh, I thank you for. And I'm so glad to bring into it Amira Leon and Aaron Liao. Hello, my friends. How are y'all? It's so good. Hello. <laughs> hey. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so first of all, I love you. You're all great. You're the best. Um, what you made was so remarkable. And we'll get into that in a second. But I guess first, how about we reintroduce ourselves? So Amira, whom's to you? Please tell me. Hello, everyone. I'm Amira. Um, I do all kinds of things with words and melodies, and I'm very happy to do so. I kind of just follow what the day says, but I guess I'm a composer as well as um, uh, an author and a playwright and filmmaker. I do all the things, you know. Um, yeah, and I wrote Illuminate Imagination after diving into the universe of Aaron Liao's world of music. And it was just so exciting to actually have something where it was like, actually, I'm going to focus on the fact that I know who's performing it. I've never written something specifically for someone else. It's usually been I've written something that they either would remix or adapt. You know, it was never that uh, I did that, you know, specifically with their voice, too, because usually my voice is at least involved, even if I compose the other parts. Um, so it was really sacred doing this and getting to know Aaron through the landscape of music and vibration. And this is just such a beautiful thing. Thank you for having me. Of course. And with that, my dear Aaron, would you like to introduce yourself? 
Hi, I'm Aaron. I play bass and I guess I sing apparently. It was funny because Amira was just like, do you sing? I think that was like a question that was asked at one point and that could mean so many different things, right? So this was one of those times where I was just like, yes. And <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, what a beautiful, you know, result and process of like a very humbling and flattering process amir kind of deep diving into my catalog and all the work that i've done and um you know writing this piece that not only sat well with my i guess you know my voice and my fingers but it it sat well with my soul which is why i think it was so um like natural and and it was a really amazing experience of being able to um, be part of the composition in a way that I think for years, you know, and I grew up playing piano, I, I always felt disconnected trying to like get the black ink on the page into my thing. And, you know, and to the, to this day, we don't have a written score for this piece, but, um, it, it I don't think that kind of, I don't think it hindered the communication process between what the piece was supposed to be and what it turned out to be and what will mm -hmm. continue to turn out to be as it's, you know, performed, um in the future you know yeah so thank you both <laughs> of course and i agree with that i mean there's not a physical score at the moment but everything got communicated the way it needed to and the end result is remarkable um i guess we'll listen to that in a little bit but let's like talk a bit through process again just for people who maybe didn't get to the workshop this uh there's not a physical score uh, what was sent was an audio file that had vocals and piano, I believe. Um, so, I don't know, Amira, like, how did you, how, what is your process normally when you're composing these things? Like, yeah, just walk us through that. <laughs> well, I do, so I, like, I believe in a series of arrivals. That's how I, like, tend to music. Um, but that means that all my time spent before is deep in meditation on what my aim is or what I'm focused on, you know. And so in this point, the only thing I did know was that we had a deadline and that Aaron was going to play it and that I had many other projects at the same time, you know. So in a, in a, in a way, I wanted to lean into the opportunity to again create a very personal I guess intimate relationship with Aaron through this but like not you know what I mean because it was really like oh I'm actually I'm gonna focus on the person I'm gonna focus on the vessel you know and so I really played a lot I played hours of piano trying to understand how I was going to because I can think I, I was thinking of um upright and so then when it was uh, electric, my mind went crazy. And I was like, oh, I need to use the piano to take me, like to let me be able to execute that in my, what's in my mind for bass. And so it was very exciting to hear the translation of just like, you know, like on the bass. And I was like, you did it. Like, <laughs> and it was far more satisfying than I think I would have anticipated it sounding with a bow on upright too because it really hit the the soul of what I wanted people to feel and I think that as an instrument in general bass is one of my favorite and the one that I, I often rely on most as a singer because it hits the soul while keeping the rhythm you know what I mean whereas like you can get lost to the piano for years you know so I just love that it was a tether when I'm so used to being in the you know in the chaos and the sauce especially when my voice is involved so anyway I just listened to a lot, a lot, a lot of Aaron's, like the songs that you've written or you've played on. And then you sent me a live video. And then I was like, oh, let me go watch some other live videos. And I listened to a lot of the music that you've released with others before. So it was just exciting to imagine who the person could be because it's not always your mouthpiece, you know? And I was like, what voice is that? I, that voice must exist. And so I did send a bunch of stems because I said, these are the voices I've heard, you know? And it's like, it was very exciting for me. I, I think 
Um, and then to see the, uh, the outcome, it was exactly what I imagined. <laughs> I was like, fantastic. Um, and then the lyrics, you know, that's where I, I live and you'll, you'll always notice who I am and where I am in a room, whether I'm there or not, whether the composition sounds like me or not. If there's language, you'll know the words are mine. And I think that that was also something that just brought me so much joy was listening to my language and someone else's tone um, because here's my tone. And you'll hear Aaron, you'll continue to pay attention. I dare everybody watching, pay attention to Darian's tone and my tone and Aaron's tone. It, it makes sense, the things we do with our world, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was, I really focused on that. And then it was about just leaving it open. You know, I imagined every note on the piano, whether I could physically tell you what it was. I did get a little stick and so I could. I was like, you can hear it in the recordings. I was like, look at that. And I was like, oh, I know what that note is. Because y'all, I'm God's moving through me. Okay, music is a thing. It's a natural thing. All these other things are ways for us to communicate better. So, you know, I, I do face a lot of like interesting conversation as a musician who composes, you know, and I've worked with orchestras and I've done the thing in France and, you know, I've done the thing and I still, you know, people are always alarmed when they find out. And it's my favorite fact about me. I don't know how to read music, but that doesn't mean that I can't communicate with you, you know? And I keep, I tour the world with songs that are in English or sometimes in Spanish, but I'll be in places where they don't speak either of those languages. And what is happening? Communication is happening. Arrival is happening. People are feeling because what we do as musicians is ignite people. And so, yeah, anyway, my goal was how can I, create a space where Aaron, who I know is also very busy, could find a place where you want to be for a few hours, for a few days to, to, to be somewhere where we all then want to gather, you know, like I'm excited about this and I'm busy as hell. And I think my first Zoom call I ever been excited about, like, I was like, oh, what is that? Anyway, I'll shut up now, but I was like, I'm just so happy. Thank you, Darren. And thank you. It's such a beautiful thing. <laughs> yes, of course. I, it's a, it's a real feeling. The, uh, you know, so many Zoom calls these past years, and uh, oh my God. now it's like, oh hey, I like this one. <laughs> I'm excited to be here and to talk with all of y'all, and we're all just of a, you know, similar spirit and like similar approach to sound, and I think that really helps the process. And I think there's like a, so there are a couple of reasons why I wanted both of y'all to do this in particular, right? Uh, one of them is. I want us to just going forward know that have a case study for hey you can ask a person who's good at making music but maybe isn't like i don't even know what you would say like just doesn't know notation it's not even the like capital c composer which like i'm not either honestly <laughs> it's just a matter of like do you notate do you not notate that shouldn't be a barrier to entry for this type of thing so that's why i wanted you amira to do this because i was like you're a powerful artist powerful composer, there's no reason for you not to be included in this type of thing. So going forward, hopefully more people like you that are like remarkable and just maybe don't have this one dialect can be involved. And that's what I want. And then with Aaron, I know that there's always this fear of like, um, when you're interacting with someone who's not of the same training as you, I found like personally, so, uh, phenomenologically anyway, there were times when I was younger where I was like, oh no, this person's gonna ask me to do things, but we don't speak the same language. I don't know if they're gonna ask me to do something I can't do or something that's like really extended that I'm gonna have to problem solve and figure out. And it's like a, a lot of anxiety maybe sometimes, but the truth is that that anxiety is not real. <laughs> and it always ends up being okay and it always ends up just being fun. And I knew that you as a musician, you're so open and free and we're always singing at each other slash with each other in rehearsals and just having a lot of fun. So I knew that putting you with Amira would be perfect. So that being said, how did you feel learning all of this in this uh, extended method, I guess? Uh, yeah. What are yeah, you extended method. What's funny is that it's not too different than how I'm actually how I've come to learn music over the past 10 years, I think I started off being in, a, in such a way where it was like, well, if you don't have the score, don't even talk to me. Like, it's going to be a waste of time. Just get the score to me. Duh. Like, come on. The, we've worked so hard to create this system where the person can die 
and we can still play their music because they've written it out on a score. So like, come on, let's go. And, but even throughout all that time, and I spoke about this a little bit during the workshop that we did last week where, um, that, that was how I learned and that's what I was used to, but all the while there was always a voice in my head that was just like, well, you know, uh, this might be good for people who are dead, but the people who are living, like what's greater than, you know, uh, at that time, YouTube, right. And a certain guitarist from a band would make a video on, Hey, here's how you play my song. And that in a lot of ways is kind of that starts to explore this realm that we're, we're talking about where it's like, if you really look at it, this way of learning music was always present. I think it, it was definitely present, you know, hundreds of years ago when maybe something wasn't written down yet. Um, and people kind of treat the score and this is the flip side of it. People treat the score as like the Bible of like, no, this is right. And if it's not on the score, it's wrong. And who knows, maybe that day, like so-and-so's intern wrote something down, forgot to change it back, you know, and later played it. And then it's like, oh, that wasn't what I intended, but you know, whatever, let's keep it in. That kind of stuff happens all the time here, you know, with what we do. Um, and to be able to experience that uh, in, in a way where the, the piece was already composed for sure. I don't think I was, you know, adding ne anything necessarily in terms of like uh composition but rather and i really love amira's term arrival right i was arriving at certain things that later you know as a result of my life experience and all the things that i've been through coming out through me you know the result is such that that is part of the composition now you know and and much like how we'll play with a certain artist that, you know, we'll be like, okay, let's do it that way from now on out. You know, it's, it's kind of a similar thing. It's like music is always com being composed. And even if a score is made, what's to say that the composition process stopped there, you know? So. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think it's always breathing. It's a very malleable thing, you know, like water becomes ice and air and it, 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 it it can flood, there's drought, there's, there's so much space. And I think that the problem is that people forget um, with knowledge comes a certain caution for the imagination, you know? And I think that that's the, it's really not, you know, the, the this or that is, is one thing, but I think the feeling is the, the most important thing, the, the ability to, to communicate without language. And when we're looking simply at vibrations, like you can look at a score and play it exactly. And it can be void of all life, you know? And that's because to unlearn what it, the, 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 I guess the process of learning in the moment, because you're active, you know, in so many different ways that like, you know, I've, I, I can read music like I read music for years when I was playing cello and I unlearned it to go be an actor and do other things and just didn't, you know, I didn't keep up with it. And now when I, you know, go to that, I'm like, it's void of all things. Play it three times well, find out where the real breath is. And that's where we'll all really be, you know? And I'm over here when I did, I was working with um, an orchestra, Montpellier, the Montpellier Orchestra. And uh, we did this piece, Una Mujer de Ramada. And I was like, I haven't heard no Spanish opera. And that might be because I'm new, but it also might be because, I don't know, I'm going to write it, you know? And so I was like writing this in Spanish and going there and everyone's speaking French and everyone, you just know, you know, everybody's older. I was one of like two black people in the room, the only one with an Afro, Jesus. And when I walked in, they all started laughing. Okay. And they saw me and they all started laughing. And I said, oh, you want to laugh? I ain't going to sing. It's the only thing that you can't see. And it's the only reason why you're here today. 
everybody was like, what? And I was like, what? Back, you know? And it was this moment where then we're playing my piece that I was, you know, I made with my friend, Sivan Elder, and we were sitting and I, I was like, the cello, she go, mm -hmm. and she had her big ass score paper stuff, <laughs> manuscript paper, and was annotating it for me in real time. And I said, tell me what is right and tell me what is wrong. Some of us have nature and some of us learn it well because we don't know how to access it within ourselves and I think that that is the one thing that I wish we could you know when I read some, an uh, English translation of something I do you really find out so much in a translation about what is what is going on with the person who translated it what the editors might have wanted what that country is allowed to say you know and there's so much different things and then you find when you listen to music you know I used to love going on YouTube, you mentioned it. When I used to play cello, I would always look up all the Bach preludes because my dream was to like learn all of them. And like I wanted to be Bach. And then I was like, then I fell in love with um, WC and I was like, well, there I am. That's where I'll live right there. Because the piano doesn't give me carpal tunnel. <laughs> um, but anyway, it was a moment where I just realized, you know, I think there is 100% a hierarchy of respect dependent on the access to knowledge and people forget that the access to nature is the only thing anyone is ever moved by and the only reason why anyone is showing up you know and then you go and you see some of these shows and you get upset that you have 200 incredibly talented people on stage playing unbelievably incredibly crafted these orchestras are so disciplined and they'll play the same song over and over again, as if the years didn't change, as if nothing's happened in between and with no emotion. And I'm like, even on the original recordings, you heard the person breathing. You can't mimic that, babe. Like, you know? Um, so anyway, that's just how I approach all of these things. And it makes me the most excited that my gift, the thing you can't see, is the thing that brings what you're shocked to see into every room. Because my voice, again, I said this last time when we spoke, is something we're still, I'm still discovering. I, I'm every single time I open my mouth to sing, I find out something new. And the day that it no longer surprises me, I'll move on to something else. You know, but I think, I think that we are filled with surprise, and I and I, I would pray that all the people who do know how to, um, you know, how to read music, how to annotate, how to communicate in that way, let it continue to be a language which is fluid. Say more on the score. Don't just put that it's an F minor eleven. Duh, 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 duh. Like put with feeling. Have you ever felt bricks on your face? Do the first rain after days without, like, you know, the, your first love. Write it like last summer. Wow, what if last summer was shit for you? It was for me, we were all there. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, what, write it like, write it like the first day of spring. Sit, play it, play it like you found out that your mother was dying and then you found out that she wasn't anymore. She was misdiagnosed. Like, imagine if you got a score and it said, feel with me and then do the work that's on the page, but feel with me. And that's what music's about, you know, um, but yeah. I apologize so deeply. I do need to head out right now, um, but I, I was really glad to be able to hop on for this little segment with you. Um, it's such a joy to work with you guys uh, on, on this. Oh my gosh. So thank you again for having me. Thank you. I love you. <laughs> You're so great. You're beautiful. And have a good time on the panel. And thanks for doing the panel. That's amazing. Yeah. Be easy, darling. Absolutely. See you. Bye. Mm -hmm. Well, now that Aaron has left us to do very important social work, um, which you can find <laughs> out about on his Instagram page, uh, should we listen to the piece? Yes. Let's listen Illuminate to imagination. Illuminate imagination. Yes um that'll happen and then i guess we can talk a little bit more about it if we wish but let's do that
Illuminate imagination. 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 Illuminate imagination.
It's just so good. <laughs> I'm so <Right>. satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. How does this feel actually for you to hear like, cause you worked with orchestras and you've done that. Have you done a lot of like just working with a solo instrument and like a single musician interpreting your work? No. Right? If not, how's this feel? I mean, it's never been in this way where it was, you know, I think it is interesting when you when you attach the word composer or classical or anything, you kind of get a different thing out of me, you know? And I think that I, I recently had this, you worked on it. It's the thing that brought me to you, um, you know, working on Mana Sky has been very interesting because, you know, they wanted me to reimagine and reinterpret opera. And I said, well, what is opera but a story with a lot of octaves? That's me, right? <laughs> That's all it is. And so I said, interesting. Now I'm going to tell a story with a lot of octaves. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and so then working on Illuminate Imagination, you know, I still was work, everything I work with me in mind. Um, and, you know, I've written hooks for other people and all those things, but I'm the one singing them. So, <laughs> you know, or people will sample my voice doing the thing. So I kind of feel like my voice is the thing that gets me places. And kind of creates an opportunity for people to understand that facility is also as important as the as the rest, you know? And I think that especially as a vocalist, you know, there's a lot of care and tending to the facility. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I've never experienced this before. I, it's like, it's very straight up, like very unassumingly delightful. Like I, Aaron is the sweetest, most tender human. I didn't, ex I knew, I knew, you know, I knew that it would sound, that his voice would give me that essence. I just didn't know it would be, he would, he would let himself go all the way, you know? And I felt like there were moments where I just felt very glad that he let himself play the piece in the same way that, you know, you hear the recordings and you've heard it from Mana Sky too, just the way I let myself play the piano. That's all I want. I want you to play your instrument. It's begging to be played um, in a new way, you know? And, and I was just so happy to see him uh, play the bass. There's so much of it. And that's one thing that always gets me so angry with, you know, other genres of music where the bass is so disrespected as just nothing but rhythm. And in, in you know, in the worst of, of locations or genres, I guess, or whatever these things are that, <laughs> get reproduced a million times the drums too get reduced you know and in the worst days what like we were discussing a classical musician is always reduced because we're only like classical in a sense creates a level of distance from what's possible and classical has nothing to do with time um so that's just been interesting getting to know because I'm like you know I love Bach and I love WC and and I've heard the best composers to live in my lifetime, to live, period. I've heard them with my ears in my lifetime. And so I think that it's an honor too. I didn't know that, you know, Aaron has made a lot of music that I love, that I listen to. You know, I love Rubina and a lot of the other projects that, you know, y'all are involved in. And I was like, wow, to think of you and not anything else you've done, like to listen to the gateways, but to think of you, just very lovely. And that he wore a nice shirt too. So. It's such a nice shirt. He's Sorry, I'm like beautiful. very happy. You can stop me. <laughs> I, you know how I am. I'm a little. I'm a little river. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. It's great. I mean, it's true. It's a. It's hard to explain to people that feeling of like, oh, I wrote that and it happened, and I didn't have to do anything while it was happening. Is the thing that I've been reflecting on a lot recently. It's a strange feeling of uh in particular if you have a committed musician who <laughs> like from the first you, you know yeah like from right at the start you know you're like oh this is gonna be great and then it's like a weird type of relax that you just have where you're like i can let I'm go never, i didn't know 
it's yeah. a kind of trust that I'm invited now to have. I'm invited to have that kind of trust. That was the kind of trust. That's why, you know, I exploded in love with you because I was just like, oh my goodness, you let me trust myself. I know what I'm doing. And you, 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 you trust and you respect me and you know that I know what I'm doing. And I think that there's a certain level of, you know, energy that vocalists also trained or not. Vocalists are often, I don't know how it happened. Y'all are, vocalists tend to be the, the, the person being supported and somehow they, the instrument inside thing is like, somehow people just don't know how to respect how intense it is. Um, and again, I thought that that was really interesting that he said, I just, I had an opportunity to say yes to singing. And to know that is an honor. You know what I mean? Because I know what it feels like to sing. And so to say yes to singing when it's not something that you normally do and for it to be so peaceful and relaxed in him was beautiful. And it also captured a literal moment in time. I was walking, to, I walked, I composed the whole thing on piano and then I walked around my, my neighborhood um, because he sent me a video of him outside. And so then I said, I should maybe think of being outside. And, and, you know, because you don't working, working, working. We've been working. So I went outside and I, and I thought of him and I hadn't been outside in a while. So it was just also lovely. I, I, I don't know if I've gone outside and said, I'm going to intentionally think about one person. You know, I was like, oh, that was a good song. And then I just started singing to myself, you know, and um, I literally saw beautiful lilies had just come to bloom, but they were coming out of concrete in a playground that was empty and locked. And it was like, oh my goodness, beautiful world, you know? And so even just hearing that back, it was a recent memory. And so for it to come back, it still feels fresh like the rain, you know? Um, and it for it to happen so quickly, it was such a swift process, you know, in the grand scheme of things. It was like, here we are. Um, <laughs> I'm just very grateful. I'm very grateful. I'm also a very sentimental human. So for it to be recorded, videoed, I, you know, I'm, this is real time. I'm really watching it. I'm like, oh shit. Like, that's so cool. Like, okay. So I'm done now. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a remarkable feeling that warrants <laughs> a lot of words and also that no words can really encapsulate for sure. So I, I, I understand. I can't <laughs> stop because there's not really like, it's so simple to me and I'm yeah. trying to explain it. And right. that's, but it's that's like it. such a vaguely succinct thing, honestly. But I hope that, and I know that this will keep happening more. So I'm happy to help bring this type of uh, what experience uh, yeah. into your life. Thanks for letting me do that <laughs> and agreeing for, to do it. And thank you for thinking of it. I think it was very considered you know, and it, and it felt considered. And I think that that's all anyone wants to be to say, I, I will show up. Yeah, exactly. And I'll do my everything to be on time. Like, that's the difference. And when you yeah. see a committed musician, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that's what we're all so used to filling in the gaps and not really trusting one another, especially with our creativity. It gets quite difficult, especially when you know what you're doing yourself when you hear it in your head or you know when you're right you know I'm a writer too when I see it when I see it you know when I see the shot lined up in my brain if we ain't getting it it's someone's fault because it's not mine I see it you know and I think that uh I think that it's really special I'm excited to make music you know without such a quick deadline um like because exactly. you know the, I, we both know all the things I'm doing right now are very deadline yeah. so I'm just like you know it's I'm excited to do that and to have in mind musicians who are of course. ready. And I'm excited to be that for other people too. You know, I, I, as a vocalist, I'm often, I'm again, this is a, a, a new thing for me. I know bass players who, I know instrumentalists outside of the voice who are always invited to like write parts for this song and whatever. And I feel like unless you're writing the whole song for somebody, people don't often ask vo vocalists to like, contribute to the situation you know what I mean like I don't have to write your bop for me to help you understand what your voice is doing inside um and like being a teacher I teach voice lessons and they come and they know that I'm not going to give them no keys mm -hmm. other than the ones to themselves which is what is inside of you and that's what I always ask all my students what's inside of you today and they're like, I'm tired. I ain't do. I said, Oh, sounds like a warm up. Wow, you know. And it's like, How you doing? What's going on? 
how's your voice box? Because the guitar, you put it down and it heals from what you did to it. And you pick it up and it's ready again. But the voice is a precious thing. Um, and so I think I'll end my rant with, it just really means the world that you said yes to singing. I assumed it was a truth. And for him to say today that, you know, it's not something that he necessarily does often or would run to do, just makes me really happy. Yes, of course. And I'm excited to see like other people pick up this piece too in the future and yeah. see how they problem solve it. And we've talked about, we'll probably make a score for the piano part, I think. Yeah. And we'll all collaborate with and you. And I'll write that. all over it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we can make a score for the piano part and it'll probably also be informed by what Aaron's done uh, mm -hmm. just because that feels respectful and appropriate. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see what the vocal part is. And it'll be so interesting yeah. Then this other experience of like this thing was written for this one person to do, but now I get to hear other people's voices in it, which mm -hmm. for me is like a really that's one of my favorite experiences in composition is if you get yeah. past the like first performance of the thing. It's like yeah. I know I I was thinking about this person when they were going to perform it. So I know I conceptualize that. But mm -hmm. then you hear someone completely different take it on from maybe a different country. It's a really interesting, beautiful feeling of like, oh wow, yeah. this thing just exists. In the yeah, world. it exists. <laughs> That's yeah. exciting. You know, I, I as a writer, I protect my work a lot because I'm a, afraid of the translation. I've seen things be translated inappropriately from like English to Spanish, you know, and that that or Sp not English to Spanish, Spanish to English really is usually where the, the trauma comes. And there's no words in English to describe to describe half of what exists in Spanish. And I think that that's been something on my heart and I don't make my lyrics available to any of my songs. They're meant for you to hear from me, you know? And I think that's something I've been having to soften to. And so I'm, I'm getting ready to write it all down, family. And it was funny that we've all been talking about like the notation, the notation, because I'm actually like literally preparing myself to sit with my catalog and write it down. Um, mostly because of that, because of other people, other people's desire to understand. And I think that it's beautiful, like Aaron said, to be able to do so while you're alive and to let ourselves be alive for real, you know? Yeah, and to remove that barrier to entry. Because just in the yeah. way that we don't want notation to exclude people from participating, as in we don't want people who don't know notation to not be able to participate. I don't want notation to exclude people from participating. That I don't want people who only know notation to not be able to participate. <laughs> like yeah, I think, and I think that's again a loosening. Too, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's a loosening, exactly. a loose, a softening. Let's thaw yeah. out, family. Let's thaw out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I guess do you have things that you're excited about that are coming up? What's the next thing everyone can see you do? Well, uh, there's lots going on, everyone. Um June 17th. I am doing a live show in front of Sands Warehouse. It's going to be a celebration of life, a little pregame to Juneteenth, also celebrating the life and legacy of Sandra Bland. Um, and I'll be playing with my band, um, a variation of my band. And um, on June 27th, mark your calendars because... I'm a part of the Lita Bend uh, Opera Festival with National Sawdust and uh, PBS WNET. And so we're premiering a 12 minute excerpt <laughs> of an opera that I will write actually on memory and time and its malleability. Um, and you will be blessed to hear Darian grace, translate, transmute, digest another one of Amira Leon's original. <laughs> um, but yes, it's called Mana Sky and it will be on broadcast on PBS at 8 p.m. on June 27th. Get your popcorn, get your wine, get your mama and your papa and their spirits and your family. Sit down and just get ready because I've been laboring over this with so much consideration and love. I don't think I've worked harder in my life on anything. Um, so I'm just grateful for this moment to just celebrate um, you and to celebrate what, you know, this organization is doing. It's very good news. And uh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. This is amazing. And yes, by the way, I'm getting a notification that I should mention. June 7th, there's going to be an amazing masterclass with Michael Martin. 
So if you're a bassist or a musician who just uh, wants to know more from someone who's amazing doing what they do, which really is like what we all should be paying attention to, uh, then check out the BPBC Facebook and Instagram and you'll be able to get more info for that. But thank you so much, Amira, for being here and for doing this and for being so giving and, and I don't know, just all the words and all the simile sermons and everything. I <laughs> so much. It's really important. And I, I'm so glad I was able to bring this into our community, uh, the little new music community that we've been building and rebuilding, especially yeah. in this transitional time. So thank yeah. you. Amazing. Thank you, honey. Have a good night. You too. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>